Amen, amen, amen. Are you ready, guys? Would you stand up with me tonight? Let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Well, look over at somebody and say, this is your night. Come on, touch and tell me it's your night. You're going to be blessed coming in. You're going to be blessed going out. You know, Psalms 150 says an incredible statement. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let me, let me speak to the Presbyterian side just a minute. It said, let everything that has breath, it does what? You do what? All right, Father, we bless you tonight. We give you glory and praise and honor. And so, Father, it's a privilege to be in your house tonight. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We say that Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And so, Father, we come to worship the King tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody shout it, amen. Amen. Okay, amen. amen. Let me just amen, tell you, let me tell you just one thing right quick. Apostle Leon, Dr. Leon, he flows in basically all five of the offices. So if he should pull you out and or give you a prophetic word, be sure to have your iPhone ready uh, to, to record it. And otherwise you won't have it. We'll get it on the mainstream or we'll see it video uh, on, on TV or internet or whatever. And so, if, but if you want to see your word or hear your word, be sure and just take your iPhone out, push the record right quick, and you'll get it, okay? And so, listen, there's going to be some things probably poking, spoken in the Spirit tonight that, that if you're not listening, you won't get it, okay? Just know tonight it's going to be a great night. Come on, put your hand over your heart. Say, it's going to be a great night. In Jesus' name, everybody shout it, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Come on, let's worship him. Let's begin to just worship him right now. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, Lord. Oh, we welcome you tonight. The King is here. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Like 
lift up a shout of praise to the King tonight. Sing it out. Oh, hail the 
power of Jesus' name, Jesus' name above any other. All hail the power of Jesus' name, yeah. Before we move on, I, that part where it says, all hail the power of Jesus' name. In the times of kings, when they would say, all hail king, whoever, you know. Everyone at that moment focused their attention to the king. So when we say, Hail the power of Jesus' name. Hail the King of glory. Hail the, Him. Our entire focus, our entire mindset goes to Him. In Psalms, when David says, Hallelujah, and all of the earth, all the creatures, everything living, Hallelujah. Like, when you break down the word Hallelujah, the word Halal is to focus your attention, to, to set your eyes, to set your gaze, to set everything about you to something. And the last part, Yah, is the shortened version of Yahweh. So when David is saying hallelujah, he's telling everything, everything, gaze upon the king, gaze upon Yahweh, hail the king. What's amazing is we can also, because the enemy has to hail the king at that point too. So whatever it is you're dealing with tonight, if this is your first time coming to a first Friday, you're in for a surprise because he always surprises us. But if you're dealing with something in your physical body, you can tell that sickness, you can tell that pain, hail the king. If the enemy came tormenting you with bad dreams and nightmares or whatever it may be, you can say, hail to the king. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name, yeah. Oh, hell, the King. Let 
Lift it up tonight.
give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Yeah. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath and our lives. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Hooray! 
an ear let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is declaring in this season for the Lord says for those of you that are determined to hear I am going to come to you in such a way that it will be an unfiltered voice by my spirit no longer will you judge based on past experiences no longer will you challenge my voice. For when I say, I love you, it will come to you in such a way that it will be unfiltered. You will not filter it by your past. You will not filter it by your past pain. You will not filter it by your rejection. But you will hear clearly my love spoken to you. And even if you've been in a place where you have not seen the fruit come forth in your life, as I declare to you tonight, you shall be fruitful and you shall multiply and you shall experience my best. My blessings will overtake you. My blessings will overshadow you. You will not filter it tonight with doubt and unbelief. For my power is here, and you are experiencing tonight the raw power of my presence. This is a new day. This is a new beginning to embrace my word, to embrace my power, and to embrace my promise over your lives. So don't fight it. Don't challenge it. Don't question any longer what I want to do for you and what I desire to do in you. For this is a night to transform you into my image. Come on, let's lift our hands. There's an impartation here. Oh, Lord, we so desire to be changed and transformed. And, Lord, we repent for even doubting what you want to do and doubting what you can do and what you will do. So every time we hear a promise we are determined not to challenge it, not to question it, but fully embrace and receive you at your word. For you are not a God that you would lie to us. So yes, Lord, we are vulnerable tonight in your presence. Not vulnerable to the world, not vulnerable to wickedness, but completely surrendered to you and what you want to do in us and through us. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. And we receive an impartation of transformation tonight. And we say, Lord, let thy will be done. Can you say that with me? Let thy will be done. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. He's awesome. He's awesome. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit move in his greatness and his power and might. But I have a word for you, like Dr. Sandy had one, but I feel like the Spirit of the Lord said this. 
He said, you're free from religion, but you're not free from your region. <laughs> Come on, think about that just a moment. Because I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you're free from religion, but you're not free from region. Because you have the authority and power. Because the Spirit of the Lord said, I've given you good gifts. Did I not say that every good gift comes from the Father above, whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning? The Lord said, I want you to use the gifts in balance and to win the world for me, saith the Lord. For surely these good gifts are made to ed bring edification, exhortation, and comfort to bring them into my kingdom. The Lord said, you are free from religion, but you're never free from your region that I put you in. The Lord said, I want you to begin to pull down and begin to bind and begin to loose and do what he's called you to do. For the Lord said, this gift is within you. The Lord said, then I say, greater that I am in you than he that in the world. And no weapon formed against you can prosper, said the Lord. So this is your hour, and hours up on you to win souls for me. The Lord said, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I felt that so strong tonight that the Lord wants you to use what you have. Use what you have, right? I mean, whatever you got, use it. And allow the Spirit of the Lord begin to use, build His kingdom. He's a good to God. He's a good, good Father. Come on, He's good, church. I'm not talking, he, He's not good when we're good. He's good all the time. He is a good, good Father. Well, listen, we're going to just turn Apostle Dr. Leon loose on you guys tonight. And Apostle Leon, would you come up and just be here? I want to induce him as he comes up. It's a man of God that I was fortunate to, when I basically was taking Bible college classes and was able to go on the road with Apostle Leon. Uh, basically, I was just a novice many years ago and just didn't really know really what to happen. And, but basically, the experience was an incredible experience because uh, he mentored on the road and we began to talk and basically I don't know where Dr. Leon will remember this or not we were in a hotel room and we were sitting um, across the bed from each other and being a novice I didn't know what happens when you impart things to other people and I said Dr. Leon and I said Apostle Leon I want your anointing what you have and he looked at me and he said, you sure? And I said, yes. And he laid hands on me and imparted. I had no clue that I would go through what he went through. But it's, it's, it was a time of mentoring and we were in an ice storm up in Minnesota and it was 40 degrees below zero. And he throws the keys to me and say, hey, you're driving. You're from Texas, you know. And uh, like I knew how to drive on ice or something. But, but anyway, uh, my mentor, actually Bishop's my father, but... Uh, Apostle Leon has always been there, a uh, great man of God, a counselor, been with CI for how many, 40 years about that, with a uh, minister with Bill Hammond all over the world, and, and ha now he is over several, <coughs> say, 100 churches now or so uh, in the Northeast and travels the world extensively, Australia, goes to Korea, all kinds of places. So let's put our hands together and welcome Apostle Leon Walters. Okay? Thank the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Look at somebody say, God is so good. God is so good. Amen. It's awesome to be here with you in Dallas. Mm. Y'all got a little heat wave here, huh? Yeah. We're coming to you from Indiana. We're having a heat wave there also, but it's a little bit more humid. You got a little bit drier heat out here. I don't know which is worse. Hot's hot. I, I said that one time, and then the Lord moved us to Phoenix. <laughs> And I found out the difference between hot and hot is one will fry eggs and the other one won't. And uh, if you drop an egg on the sidewalk in Phoenix, it'll fry the egg. <laughs> in Colorado, I'm from Denver, Colorado. That's my native home. And uh, <clears throat> it'll get 98 to 100 degrees in the Mile High City. And, uh, but it won't fry an egg. But Phoenix, it'll fry an egg. <laughs> Praise God. It's exciting to be here and to, uh, wow, see all of you here. And uh, exciting to be with the, with the apostles, the pastors of your house tonight. Amen. Uh, I always like to say I, I like to see people that have gone through the fire or gone through the storm, you know. And they've been in their Elijah cave <laughs> several times, you know. Uh, there's even there at a time when you just believe them, the ravens were feeding you. <laughs> Amen. They've been through some hard, hard, hard places, but 
I'm telling you, this, uh, when I got to see him this time, to see a fresh vision in him, to see fresh life in him, to see fresh hope in him, they're more excited about you than any congregation that they've ever pastored. Amen? Because they know that through it all that we're on destiny. Amen? And uh, <clears throat> Bishop Hammond always shares on, on building a church or building a vision that God always raises up a man. Now, you know, that was a problem in the Old Testament. You know, people had problem with Moses. People had problem with, with uh, Joshua, Caleb, and uh, uh, to a point where they murmured and complained against them, even though it was going to cost them their life. Look at somebody and say, how stupid is that? <clears throat> you know, they, and they said, you know, who's he? I mean, if he can do that, we can do that. We pray, we sing, we testify, we prophesy. You know, we can do all that, you know. And God said the difference was that I chose a man, and you've rejected the man. So when we discover when God chooses somebody, we don't reject who he chooses. You know, it doesn't mean they're perfect or do, will do everything perfect, even though they're pretty close. Yeah, they're pretty close, I'm telling you. They, they've done wonderful, you know. But then God chooses a place. Everybody say a place. Now tell somebody, you are in an awesome place. You would be shocked at how many people are leaving the place that they're in trying to find a better place. And guess what? There is no better place. Come on. There is no better place. Amen. Uh, I was honored to live in San Antonio, Texas for about seven years. I went to school there back in the 60s. Actually started in 1959. And uh, three, two of my daughters was born. So I got two Texan daughters. Hallelujah. <laughs> and one Coloridian. Glory to God. <laughs> I got three, three beautiful daughters. And we got 13 grandchildren. And we got five great-grandchildren. Getting ready to have two more in January. How about that? Amen. So we'll, seven great-grandchildren. Amen. And I'm only 52. I done pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I am excited to be here and uh, <clears throat> working with churches throughout the nation and uh, internationally and working with pastors and leadership teams. But I, I love working with the saints. I love working with the church. And I, I love the millennials, the younger generation. Anybody like the younger generation? But I really, really love the older generation. And not because I'm older. <laughs> not because I'm older. I just think there is so much wisdom and there is so much that is locked up in a generation that's being forgotten. And just try to find a place to put them you know, so they get out of the way. You know, I'll assure you that won't happen in this house. No. Amen. Because Bishop Hammond is 84 and he's not going to let that happen. <laughs> Amen. And so my wife is in Indiana tonight, and my daughters, my, one of my daughters and her husband pastor of the church where we we're pioneering there in Indiana, and both have two daughters and all my, seven of my grandchildren that work with us there in the ministry. And so they're doing a meeting tonight, and our grandchildren will be on prophetic teams prophesying. Look at somebody say, your children will prophesy. One of the greatest signs of the end times, Amen. That, that your children, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be upon your children and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Amen. And so <clears throat> I'm excited about, about Texas and just about as we is flying into the city, you know, we just try to put out senses about, you know, how do you feel, how do you feel about things in the airways, you know. And we had a rather rough landing and... Uh, so it is my take that the pilot was probably mentoring another pilot, probably. You know, because the plane hit and it went back up and it come back down again. They don't do that. That's not normal. That's not normal. And so, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. But the plane was navigating as it was coming in. So, you know, I, I kind of felt like maybe maybe there was an amateur that was working on it, but I'm sure he had somebody better with him there. <laughs> Amen. Because we got down okay. And, uh, you know, but that's what I hear the Lord saying where we're at here. As God says that 
I'm in the captain chair with you. Amen. And I'm navigating. I'm navigating you. And I believe that God's navigating Texas. And he is outlining the borders of your state. And there's getting ready to be a, a breaking through. Breaking through the walls. Say breaking through the walls. And God's getting ready to enlarge your potential, to enlarge your anointing, amen, to enlarge your capacity, amen, to do, be, and go where you've never gone before, amen. And so I believe a word, uh, we could release a word over Texas and we could say that you just entered a breakthrough season. Amen. Look at somebody say a breakthrough season. Now, uh, I had a gentleman in our church when we heard the word breakthrough. I see some of you look familiar to me tonight, and then some of you I've never seen before. Amen. And I know I look probably different to you. Amen. Is it the, you know, the guy comes in here all dressed up and everything, trying to impress somebody. No, it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> it's just what I do. <laughs> Amen. But I see so many new faces and, and all that is here tonight. It's the same Holy Spirit. Say it's the same Holy Spirit. How did you enjoy that worship? Was that good? Yes. That was good. You know, I just, uh, you know, we learn to give in worship, but then we need to learn to receive from worship, you know. And while the prophetess of the house, uh, prophetess uh, Sandy, she's prophetess, but she's very apostolic at the same time. As she was prophesying, I could see something going down to when she said, if you will receive it, if you will receive it, that unfiltered love of the Father that looks beyond every fault, every situation, every condition, every reputation, God sees none of that. Look at somebody said, he sees none of that. The Bible says, actually, it's so far out of his mind and heart as the heavens are from the, from the, from the seas. Amen? It's out of his heart and out of his mind. But that, that, that unfiltered love of the Father going into your hearts and cultivating, that's what I could see happening in that, in that praise tonight. Amen? But we need to learn how to receive from that because that is what prepares you. It prepares you for the word. It prepares you for your faith, and it prepares you for the vision that God has given you. And you know, some people are always looking for something new. We live in a nation where new is the mandate. So, for example, they'll come out with a new car here in just another month. Some of them are already out with 2019, but they're already working on 2020. And they'll be downplaying 2019 in about six months. And they'll start up playing the next year. You know, if we're not careful in the church, that same mentality will get over into the church. And we're so looking to the next thing that we miss the very thing that God is doing. Look at somebody say, he's doing a good thing. He doesn't ever say it was gonna, a, good thing, a feeling good thing. It's just, it's a good thing. Even pain, it's a good thing. Amen. If we're, if we're totally surrendered to the Father, amen. And so we're excited to be here with you tonight. And we're going to break into a word tonight, and then <clears throat> we'll wrap around with this on Sunday morning. And I'm not trying to preach, uh, like Bishop says, a sugar stick message for you. I'm preaching what I feel is the word of the Lord, or just trying to activate something in you uh, tonight and Sunday through this word, amen. And... Uh, uh, we will call somebody out and minister. The Lord has not showed me who yet, but he will show me. It won't be everybody personally, but it will be everybody corporately. Amen. Amen. So if you have ears to hear, nobody should leave this building tonight having not heard the word of the Lord. Amen. You know what I mean? And uh, what we need to be so excited about hearing this Logos word. Whoo. Whenever your excitement gets to the point where you want to hear a prophet or an apostle prophesy more than the Logos word, you are missing, you are missing the point. You know what I mean? And, and hear this also. There's nobody that could speak into your life that is greater than the Holy Spirit that is in you. Isn't that awesome? 
And God loves you enough to favor you, amen, with that anointing. Amen. When you get alone with the Father, you plow through all the darkness and you plow through all the hardship and you plow through all the muck and all the stuff that the devil throws at you and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit speaks in. Hey, well, listen, during worship tonight, I've been praying about a certain situation in ministry that we're dealing with and I heard the voice of the Father. So I got an answer tonight during the worship. Amen. So... <laughs> Look at somebody say, thank you. <laughs> Amen. I come all the way here just to get that word. Glory to God. <clears throat> all you got to do is invest in an airplane flight and get the, right, you know, <laughs> get the invitation to go someplace, and the word's there, right? Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, enlarge your borders. Enlarge your borders. Amen. And begin to prepare, prepare yourself for enlargement, for expansion uh, in this season. Amen. And things that have been stagnated, things that it looks like it's been on one level, things that looks like it's been in one place, God is saying that I'm ready now to expand you to the right and to the left. You've been through the making, you've been through the shaking, you've been through the breaking, and now you're ready for the taking. Yeah. Amen? And you're ready, you're ready to take the glory, you're ready to go to that next level that Father has for you. Amen? And as Apostle Mickey was uh, just sharing the, the word that he was sharing tonight, amen, that uh, I, I could just hear in my spirit that apostolically God is clearing the atmosphere, amen, for your kingdom shift. Say my kingdom shift. And if Bishop Hammond was here, he'd be talking to you about trying to shift a gear, amen, <laughs> you know, to try to, you know, increase that momentum, amen, so you can get to that next place that God has for you. But if you're not careful, a past experience will keep you in bondage of where you come from. Look at somebody say, I don't want to be there. I, I don't want to be there. I don't, I don't want to live in that past experience, and neither do I want the past experience to be a dictator over my future. Come on now. I want to hear clearly the voice of the Father. Amen. So that's what we're going to share with for a while tonight and just... Uh, and. Uh, if we call somebody out and minister, I pray that your telephone is ready. How many of you have smartphones tonight? How many of you have this phone smarter than you? <laughs> Amen. You know, I asked that one time, and then I said, how many of you people with smartphones know where record is at on your phone? And the hands went down 50%. <laughs> well, why you got a smartphone if you don't know where record is at on your phone? Look at somebody say, you're a prophetic person, not a pathetic person. <laughs> Amen. So we learn where record is at on our phone. That's the age. That's the age that we live in. Amen. So I pray that we're instant and we're ready. Amen. As we just move forward tonight. Father, just Lord, I'm asking you to anoint this house, anoint every ear that is hearing tonight. Lord, even those that are uh, tapping in and connecting with us online. Father, uh, Lord, release your anointing and touch the ears of everyone. Oh God, Lord, that like the little finger on the hand can reach way down to the inner ear. God, reach way down to the inner ear of each one tonight and let your word, oh God, loosen something in them, oh God, Lord, that will position them and that will prepare them, Lord, for this kingdom shift, for that next level uh, that you're bringing them into in this season. As I just prayed that, I heard the Lord say, there's going to be such joy that God is getting ready to pour out, and there's going to be some songs of joy that are going to be written that will be weapons of war. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you happy. Look at somebody say, the devil's unhappy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Revelation chapter 10 says, the devil's so unhappy, he is so angry because he knows he only has a little time left. Come on. The happier you get, the more you torment the devil. Come on. I, while I was just praying, I just heard, where's our songwriter at tonight? Who's our songwriter? You are a songwriter? Who's our songwriter in the house tonight? We got one? We got any other songwriters here? Hey, man, there's going to be songs of joy that are going to be weapons of war. Amen. That is going to set people free. It's going to set their heart to rejoicing, their feet to dancing, their body to twirling, their hands to clapping. Amen. It's going to set them free. Amen. From, uh, from all the encumberment of the enemy. Amen. So look at somebody say, enlarge your borders. Amen. I want to break into this word tonight. I want to share three prophetic 
words of, of excerpt. Now, my word to you is going to be enlargement. Amen. But I, I want to give a, a preliminary to that of three prophetic words. <clears throat> if you've been online much, amen, you have heard parts of these words. One of them is from our Bishop Hammond, Bishop Bill Hammond, who is my brother-in-law, has been for 56 years. See, my wife and I just celebrated the 56th anniversary just a, a week, a couple weeks ago. And, uh, but Bishop Hammond heard a word this year, and I'm not going to give you his whole word. I'm just going to give you one excerpt of the word, and you can go online uh, and, and, and get the, these words through ChristianNational.org. But Bishop Hammond said that as you co-labor with God this year, look at somebody say co-labor. co-labor. That means as you begin to work with God. Say work with God. As you begin to work with him this year, Amen. And when he's talking about co-laboring, it's kind of like James 1, 24 and 25. And the Bible says that I want you to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Say doers. doers. Amen. That word doers actually means to work the word or to put the word to work. Come on. So when you hear the word and you get the rev- a revelation of the Logos word or the word that is being preached or you get a revelation of the prophetic spoken word, amen, then he says, take that word and put that word to work. Don't put it in a desk drawer or your glove box in your car or under the seat, oh man, or hide it somewhere down in your purse or no, no. Work the word. Listen to that word over and over and over. Yeah. I was in one of our meetings and our school of the Holy Spirit there in Indiana, and uh, I had a couple come to the church from Indianapolis, and they brought their 16-year-old son with them, and the 16-year-old son had what was a strange haircut then. Now it's beginning to look more normal, uh, <laughs> and uh, he had uh, chains hanging from his ear, pinned to his lip, pants that were you know beyond way beyond the hip line, and. Uh, and pins all over his lips and his eyebrows. And um, when you saw the young man, you know, it was like three different colors in his hair. When you see the young man, you're like, oh, God, what happened to him? <laughs> he looked like a baboon in an accident. I mean, it looked bad. But guess what? As we begin to minister, God says, I want you to pray for that young man. And I'm like, God... Anybody but that young man. (laughs) Because I'm a father. You know what I mean? I feel some things need to be corrected here. (laughs) So not good for me to prophesy to this young man. But I call that young man out and begin to prophesy the word of the Lord to him. And guess what? The love of the father was so accepting of that young man. It was like. There, it was like God looked right through everything that you could see in the natural, and he pulled everything out of the inner heart, mind, and being of that young man. Pulled all of his potential out. How many of you know God doesn't speak to your ability? He speaks to your potential. Amen. God knows how he created you and what he created you to be able to do. But God just began to pull all the potential out of that young man. And he began to cry, amen, through all that gothic paint that he had on his face. And just, he, he began to cry, amen. And after, after the word, I did not get to see the young man again for many, many, many months. And, uh, but one thing the Lord had spoke to him was that you have a skill, and I gave you that skill, and I give you a skill of technology, and God says, I'm going to open a door, amen, that will position you in technology that you won't go through all the, all the co- college and university preparation that others go through, and I'll take you from nobody to somebody at the very top. Yeah. Now, isn't God good? Yes. Isn't God good? Yeah. See the young man two years later. Guess what? I didn't even recognize him. He looked like a businessman. You know, I don't know which was worse. (laughs) Now he swung too far that way. (laughs) But guess what? He gave me his testimony, and he said that I... I didn't know what to do with the prophetic word, but when that word came, it done something on the inside of me. And he said, 
I, I got me an iPod at that time. He didn't have even the iPhone yet. He had an iPod, and he said that I, I listened to the prophetic word over and over and over every day, and I never missed a day listening to the prophetic word. Everybody say, work the word. Work the word. You work the word by hearing the word, by believing the word, by mixing faith with the word, by being patient with the word, by releasing humility, amen, with that word, to bring that word to maturity. And when God spoke to him about being a tech, you know, in technology, he took a home study course with uh, building a computer. I want everybody to hear this. And he, he builds this computer and he passes the test. Now, this is the high school dropout, no other type of education, but God says that I've gifted you. Look at somebody say, you're gifted. I'm talking to many of you tonight that have not yet tapped into your gift. Come on now. There is a gift of God that he has birthed within. He created you for a purpose. You're not here by accident just to do time on earth. Come on, to say that you've been here. <laughs> no, you're here for a purpose and for a destiny, and God has birthed a uniqueness on the inside of each one of you. Come on. And then God says you're going to be a businessman at the top. How in the world is that going to happen? See, God will go to work for you and take you from nowhere to somewhere. And this young man picked up the paper and saw an ad in the paper. And it was a law firm in Indianapolis. And they said, we're looking for a young person that knows nothing. <laughs> the young man calls and he gets an interview. And there's a lot of people down there for the interview. Don't you know that? And guess who got in on the interview? He gets in on the interview. They interviewed this young man and just loved his personality and the fact that he knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> and this is what they said. We wanted to hire somebody that knew nothing that we can train them the way that we want them. We don't want them pre-made, pre-trained. We want to train you. Come on now. In three years, that young man being the, uh, ended up being the techie for eight lawyers in a law firm. He'd done the purchasing. He'd done the programming. He'd done all the lawyers couldn't do anything on their computers without his approval of whether or not it would work. <laughs> Why are you sharing that with you? I'm trying to tell you that where we're at in Texas, where we're at in this church, where you're at in your personal life, you, you must get your eyes off of all of the things that become a dictation to you as to whether or not you'll be able to, can you, will you. God, God surpasses all of those things to fulfill his word in you. Come on now. And so this young man knew nothing, but God took him from being nobody through the prophetic word, but it was him working that word. Bishop Hammond said, as you co-labor with God this year and you're obedient to his commands. Look at somebody say, God hasn't changed his mind. Changed his mind. Amen. His commands are still his commands. Thou shalt not. Come on now. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Commit adultery. Covet. Come on now. Thou shalt not forsake the Lord your God. Thou shalt have no other gods before you. God has not changed his mind. Amen. So as you co-labor with God this year and you're obedient with his commands, Bishop Hammond said, it's going to be a glorious and a prosperous year. Yeah. What? Say glorious and prosperous. Yeah. Even in the natural, when everything looks absolutely impossible, yet with God, all things are possible. Come on. And he said it's going to be a glorious and a prosperous year. Now listen, I just got off the phone with Bishop <clears throat> day before yesterday. I flew, yeah, traveled yesterday, on well, Wednesday. Wednesday. And this is what he said. I have not experienced the glorious and prosperous year yet this year. 
But I'm not going to quit prophesying and believing it until I see it happen because I believe that God said this is going to be a glorious and prosperous year. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. Don't give up on the word. Don't give up on your anointing. Don't give up on your calling. Don't give up on your positioning. Come on. God has you positioned where you can grow, where you can sow, amen, where you can show forth the power and the glory of God in this season of your life. So as you co-labor with him this year and you're obedient to his commands of his word, he is it is going to be a glorious and a prosperous year, and he said it will be much like on the day of Pentecost. Come on, when the Father spoke to the apostles and, and he said, I want you to go to an upper room, I want you to go to a certain place in the city, and I want you to wait there, I want you to abide there until. Everybody say, until. until. How many of you would like to have a word tonight where God said, I want you to go to a room and just stay in that room until? Yes. Come on, y'all. You know we don't like that. Come on. But he said, I want you to go there until. And he said, I am going to be sending the comforter, the Holy Spirit. I wish I could just preach on just this tonight, but I've got more that God wants me to share. But whenever I say that he's going to send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, you need to understand this is a visitation of heaven that has never yet fully come to earth. And God said, I'm getting ready to send a visitation to earth that you have never experienced, that the earth has never known. Dr. Fuchsia Pickett, late Fuchsia Pickett, said in one of her messages that daddy likes to show off. <laughs> come on. She said daddy was showing off on the day of Pentecost. Come on now. But he said, I want you to go there. I want you to wait. I want you to stay there until. And they said, until what? Until the Holy Spirit fully comes upon you. Amen. Well, how would we know when it comes? You'll know when it gets there. Well, what will it look like? You'll know when you see it. Well, what does it sound like? You'll know when you hear it. How many of you like to have information like that? Come on now. Come on, we're, come on, we're in an instant America right now. We want it now. Come on. He says, go there and wait. Can I just release a, a prophetic decree over businesses here tonight and over young people and over uh, all of you? Come on now, where God has you, be patient in this season. God is working all things together for your good. He is shifting things. He is moving things. He is rearranging things. Come on. And if you jump, if you jump the stall, if you try to get out, you're going to get right out of his will and his purpose. Hold steady where you're at. Come on. Okay. And God said, I want you to go there. I want you to wait there because I'm sending the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Come on. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that when that event happened, it was like a tornado in the city. Come on. Thousands of people in the city. You just have to stretch your imagination a little bit. Thousands of people in the city, and it's like a mighty rushing wind in the city, and theologians bigger that the sound was so loud and the disturbance was so great in the city, it was like a tornado. Come on. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Say it fell upon them. The Holy Ghost fell upon them, and it, it was like fire, tongues of fire that was sitting upon their head, and that fire, come on, was going onto the inner being, onto the inside of them, and they was being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Look at somebody say, you have that same power. <laughs> come on, that same power is imparted into you tonight, that promise of the Father. And guess what? People don't want to pray in the Holy Ghost. Why would you reject the greatest gift that God ever sent to earth? Come on. Because he said it will no longer be Christ with you, but it will be Christ in you, the hope of glory. Why? Come on now. Hey, hey. Come on. He said, and in addition, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death or hardship or financial impossibility or rejection or deception or all of these things, keep walking because I'm walking there with you. 
You know, I think some people think they can take a vacation from God. Well. <laughs> By that I mean, you know, if I just slip off today, God won't really know. Holy Ghost won't really know. Pastor won't know. <laughs> Wife won't know. Your husband won't know. <laughs> Your children won't know. Sometimes we think we can just, just escape. You know when I got my greatest discovery of this? Was one morning in a shower. <laughs> Revelation comes in showers. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showers of blessing. <laughs> Come on. All of a sudden I realized I'm naked. I'm not alone. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me into the shower. <laughs> His promise, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You can't even hide in the shower. Listen to some of you. But that power of the Holy Ghost. Bishop Hammond said it'll be like that day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Come on. They waited many days and suddenly... Look at somebody and say, suddenly. suddenly. I've discovered that for every suddenly, there's a process. Every time you see the word suddenly in the Bible, there's a process that they went through, and suddenly the Holy Ghost came. Joshua riding all night with his men to Gibeah, suddenly they came upon their enemies. Come on now. Whoa. Look at somebody and say, your suddenly is getting ready to happen. But listen, it's not the suddenly coming to you. It's you coming to your suddenly. Come on now. You've been in a process for a long time. You've been believing for a long time. You're just in a season where God said, I'm getting ready to match you up with your suddenly. I've been working a miracle for you. I've been making a preparation for you. I've been making an alignment for you. And your suddenly is getting ready to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Come on. <laughs> If you're obedient, you co-labor with him this year and you're obedient to his commands, it will be a glorious and a prosperous year. Can I just prophesy that over each one that is hearing me right now and even those watching online, if you will activate your faith, come on, it will be a glorious and it will be a prosperous year for you. Come on now. And God is turning the wrong all for right and he is working it all for your good and he is defeating your enemies in this season. I was in Minnesota, another church in Minnesota, <laughs> and, uh, you know, prophesying a word of the Lord to the pastors who had been kicked out of the denomination that they was a part of because of the Holy Spirit and because of the prophetic and, well, you just can't go there. So they locked the doors and when they got to church on Sunday morning, they couldn't get in the building. So they stepped out, and I would say 90% of the congregation at least followed them, if not more. And they just went into another place and just started and done a service outside. <laughs> and uh, God opened it up, and now, now God's planted this beautiful, beautiful church there that is just full of the fire of the Holy Spirit. But the Lord spoke to them prophetically, say prophetically, Understand the prophetic is not spooky, spiritual. Come on, it's not far-fetching. It is merely God speaking. Yeah. Say God speaking. God speaking. Amen. So this Bible is prophetic because this is the word of the Lord from Genesis to Maps, from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. This book is prophetic. Yeah. Amen. So the word of the Lord came to them and said that, you know, I'm going to open up land for you and it's on a highway that you've been on before and you have never seen the land before because I've hidden it from you. But now I'm going to cause you to see and I'm going to give you a miracle and I'm going to give you the land. Okay. Well over a year later. They're desperate for a building, for facilities. We're desperate here. And uh, they was driving down a major highway in the city, St. Cloud, Minnesota. And 
There's a piece of property off to the right, and the prophetic word said that there's a lake on the property, and it's beautiful land, and it's highly visible, and it's got two main road crossings, and, you know, it was just, it was kind of detailed. And uh, they're driving by this piece of property, and all of a sudden, they looked off to their right, and they saw this land as they was driving by, and this, there's no for sale signs, but they said, that this looks like the prophetic word. We're driving right by the prophetic word. And there was a home in the back corner of the property. And they, they drove back to the house, knocked on the door, and the gentleman comes to the door. And they said, you know, we're with Jubilee Fellowship here, and, and um, you know, we're looking to buy some land. I'm not interested in selling land. Well, we just like to just talk to you. I don't want to talk about it. Well, here's our card, just in case you ever would change your mind. And he slammed the door. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a short time later that the phone rings. And so this man is calling and he says my mother has become very 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 sick and uh, we may be interested in selling the land and so they approached him and talked to him about the land he said no way and then he calls again and he says my mother is on her deathbed will you pray and they said we will pray and they prayed and then he called again and he said my mother has passed away. Are you still interested in buying the land? Because somebody say, God will move mountains. God, he will shift people. He will shift king. You need to understand the power of the word. Of the, come on, we've, I'm afraid that we have let the word be too interesting to us and tickle our ears or our fancy or, you know, just to get us excited. No, but the word is power. It is life. It is real. And when you activate your faith, your patience, your humility with that word, come on now, and you get rid of all of your fear and your insecurity, there's power, power in the spoken word of the Lord. Come on. And they made a man an, the, an offer on the property that was affordable to them, and he sold the property to him, and they give him the home to live in as long as he is alive. Come on now. And said, we will take care of you. And the church takes care of that man on the property. Come on now. And they have built a beautiful facility right there on the main highway. God, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this to build your faith because God said this is a season of breakthrough. This is a season of next level. Come on now. And you have already forgotten the words that God spoke to you. And just because you got in the fire and you got in a hard place, you've given up on the word of the Lord. Go back to the word of the Lord. What did God say? Because he's not changing his mind. <laughs> Look at somebody say, God's not changing his mind. Prophet Tom Hammond, Bishop Hammond's youngest son, received a prophetic word, and his word was, in a nutshell, battle at the gate this year. Say battle at the gate. Battle in 2008, we heard a prophetic word about the gates and gates being opened. We preached more about the gates of heaven and the 12 apostles of the Lamb at the gates of heaven. Come on now. And their names at the gates and the power in the gate. Amen. The breakthrough on the gate and going through the gate. Amen. Get rid of all the rubbish that tried to block the gate. Amen. And go on through here. We preached more on gates in 2008. But this word was a little different. And it caught my attention this year. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Amen, because he said, battle at the gate this year. The devil does not want you to go through. Come on. So you need to understand that there's a principality, there's a power of darkness and evil, amen, that is contrary to the word of God. And whenever God begins to speak to you and you begin to go to that breakthrough, all the gates of hell try to rise up against you, but you need to remind yourself of the word. No gates formed against me will prosper. Greater is Christ that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on. And I have the word of the Lord. 
And Apostle Tom said there are at least eight giants that the enemy has assigned to your gate. Come on now, to war with you at your gate and say you're not going to break through, you're not welcome, and you can't come in here. I'm telling you, in the gates of Dallas, Texas, uh, and in this city, come on, the devil does not want you here, but it is too late. God has already gone before you. His word has already gone before you. Come on now. You just have to wage war at your gate. You're going to have worship times in this church when there's going to be so much warfare. It is going to be so radical. Come on now. It's not just going to be sweet Jesus uh, and how much he loves us and how much we love him. There are going to be decrees that go out of your mouth and out of your spirit that is going to challenge every principality, is going to challenge every power. Come on now. And there's going to be radical warfare in this house. Say radical warfare. Pastor Tom said that there will be giants at your gate such as intimidation, humiliation, false accusation, depression, deception, manipulation, pollution, dilution. Come on now. All these giants the enemy has tried to size up to you and to put at the gate and say you're not going to break through this year. Because somebody might say the devil's a liar and the father of lies. Why? Because if God decreed it and his word decrees it, come on now, the breakthrough is there for you. And God said, this is your year. I want you to come on through your gates. Come on now. Don't get intimidated by the setup of the enemy at your gate. The problem in 2008 when people got to the gate and there was so much opposition that people thought they were out of time and that was the spirit of deception. Come on now. And because the going got tough, the, the, the tough began to run. Come on. Yes. But see, it's a new season. Look at yes. somebody say, it's a new season. new season. I see some things that some of you have had to lay down, and it was a regret that you had to lay it down, but God said, pick it back up again. I'm anointing it in this season. Come on now. I'm anointing your worship. Uh, I'm anointing your dance. Uh, I'm anointing your praise. Uh, I'm anointing your evangelism. Uh, I'm anointing your family. Uh, I'm anointing your money. Uh, I'm anointing your ability. I'm anointing your skills. Come on now. I'm anointing, releasing a fresh anointing uh, of the power of the Holy Spirit within you, says the Lord. Wow! Look at somebody say, it's our time. Come on, say, let it come, Jesus. Come on, I begin to take this word serious this year, Apostle Mickey and Sandy, and I begin to sign these giants to our intercessors uh, and our prayer warriors. Uh, and I said, begin to work, begin to pray and intercede, not just in a prayer meeting, uh, but all year. Be tearing these things down. Take them apart, inside out. Come on, don't, don't just pray it away. Totally annihilate it. Come on. Look at somebody say, you're bigger. Come on now, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are bigger. The young man back here was, uh, I believe he was playing a guitar tonight. Yeah, would you please stand? Hey man, I got your recorder on. Praise God. Now see, he's an example for you. So <laughs> he, he knows right where it records at, so he'll get there quick. Amen. What, what's your name real loud for me? Jonathan. Johnny? Jonathan. 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 Amen. Jonathan, I just looked back at you and I could see a light over you. And God said, son, this is a limelight season for you. And the Lord said, I'm getting ready to expose some things. And God says, I'm moving every limitation that the enemy has tried to put about you. And the Lord said, son, this is your next level season, says the Lord. And I just see you putting your shoulder to the will. And the Lord said, even though the grind may be tough, God says, know that I'm tougher. And God said, I'll bring you through every situation, says the Lord. But God God said, my anointing is upon you. My favor is upon you, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to be a reaper of the end time harvest. Brother, there's a strong prophetic evangelistic anointing upon you. And I can just see a fire burning on the inside of you. And God says, I'm breaking you past all your fear. And I'm going to use you to be my, my weapon of war that will literally smear the enemy, says the Lord. And God said, I want you to stand and begin to fight the good fight of faith. Brother, there's a healing miracle that God is releasing in your
your family. And God said, I'm going to use you as an instrument, just like I use Benjamin. I'm going to use you as an instrument to turn your entire family around, says the Lord. And God said, this will be a time of glory. It'll be a time of praise. Uh, it'll be a time of promotion. It'll be a time of escalation. Uh, it'll be a time, the Lord says, when I do the supernatural in your life. So the Lord says, son, lift your sights higher. Stay the course, says the Lord. And the Bible says that if you're faithful, faithful, Jonathan, with that which is another man's, God will give you your own. And God said, be faithful, son. The time will come when you will be a sent one and not just one that went, says the Lord. And you will go with a mantle of a double portion upon your life, says the Lord. God is putting things together, brother. Get ready. You're going to be almost like in a whirlwind. God said, I'm going to move very quickly, says the Lord. And I'm going to do a quick work in this season of your life, says the Father. Lord, I charge this young man. Lord, I just anoint songs and music, oh God inspiration and dedication and preparation, Lord, to be released into the heart of this man. Oh, God, that releases a whole new development on the inside of him, God. Lord, there's a faith that is rising in him, God, that will come against every work of the enemy and, God, he will stand as a mighty, mighty end-time warrior. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at somebody say hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? My little sister, right over here on the corner, just right off to my left, right here. Yes, you, hon. Yes. Amen. So if phones are in your hand, you know where record is at, right? Okay, because we don't want to lose too much time doing this. Otherwise, okay, are you ready? Can you stand with me? Okay. I ask you to stand because if I have to stand, no. no I, what's your name, hon? Dahlia. Dahlia? Dahlia? Uh -huh. Is that right? Amen. <laughs> Stretch your hands over to Dolly, will you? Do Dolly, I just looked over at you and I heard the Lord say, Daughter, I love you so much. Listen, the enemy has tried to put so many limitations about you. You've gone through wall after wall after wall. But the Lord says, daughter, this is a new season, says the Lord. And God said, every wall that you've had to break through has made you stronger, says the Lord. But I'm hearing the word settle in, settle down, plant yourself, says the Lord, because this is going to be a time of new preparation. And there's just been some old mindset that God's going to set you free from. You didn't ask for him. You didn't want him. But the enemy tried to put him about you. And and God said, there's going to be healing in the family. There's going to be turnaround, says the Lord. And God said, I'm repositioning you. You are not just an intercessor. You are a prayer warrior. And God said, I want you, daughter, to fight the good fight of faith. And take Isaiah chapter 62, where the Bible says that give heaven no rest until heaven breaks through. And God says, daughter, heaven is getting ready to break through for you. Heaven's going to break through over your church. Heaven's going to break through over your sphere of influence. Wow, it's like, it's like the Holy Ghost is in you, is following you, it's all about you, and there's going to be no question about who you are, says the Lord. And God says, daughter, I give you power and I give you authority over principalities and powers, says, uh, listen, there's a deliverance ministry, a deliverance. Uh, please hear the word of the Lord. Don't run off or let somebody pull you off or pull you in. God said, hold steady right where you're at. But there's a deliverance ministry, a deliverance anointing that God wants wants to work in you, and he wants to work through you, says the Lord. And I hear God say, you're in the right place. Hold steady. Hold your ground, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to hear a brand new sound of heaven, and it's going to cause revelation to begin to open up on the inside of you, says the Lord. And I'm hearing the word miracles. God said, I'm working a miracle in you, and you're going to lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Said, whoa, I see a whole line of people following you to church because of the miracles that God has worked for you. See, somebody's got the concept that the miracle's going to happen here, but it's going to happen in your sphere of influence, wherever God has you. So the Lord says, daughter, it's a new season, a new day, and it's a new way, and you're going to be able to stand and say, how great is my God. God bless her. In Jesus' name, we pray. Little sister right here with a yeah, gray blouse on. Hallelujah. A little pink dot on your shirt. Hallelujah. What's your name, hon? Sandy, Sandy, I hear a word of the Lord to you, and I, and I hear God say, double favor, double honor, double blessing. Now listen, life does not feel that way, but God said, it is true, and God said, I'm working everything together for your good. 
I heard the Lord say, stand the course, quit listening to people, says the Lord. And God said, I, I'm clearing your ears of all the muck and all the, all the garbage that the enemies tried to bring toward you. You are, as the prophet of Sandy spoke tonight, going to hear that, that unfiltered love of God. And you're going to hear that unfiltered word of the Lord. Now let, me, now, let me just share with you. There's a prophetic mantle upon you. It's almost scary nowadays to say that because people run and they do crazy things. And I hear God say, don't do that. The Lord says, hold steady. And I hear God say, he's going to give you reputation and he's going to take you through a time of preparation. And God said, I'm asking you for a deeper level of dedication. And the Lord said, even a time of separation unto me, says the Lord. And God says, daughter, I I'm going to release my word to you. I'm going to release revelation to you. There's an authorship and there's a book that you're going to write and it's going to be in relation to your life history, your life story, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to see deliverance and you're going to see healing of multitudes, says the Lord. And especially in your family, God says, don't give up. Even though the enemy is scattered and shattered. God said, yet yeah, I am the gatherer of the breach, says the Lord. And God said, I will gather them back together and there will be rejoicing and there will be joy in your house again, says the Lord. You have a beautiful voice to sing. And God says, don't sit on your gifts anymore, says the Lord. And God said, bring your gifts out of the closet because it's a new day, says the Lord. And God said, what hindered you, hurt you, and offended you and set you back in the past, God said, was all a setup to bring you to this day, says the Lord. And God says, you're better today than you have ever been. So God says, get in your race and run to win, says the Lord. Father, charge her by the power of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, God is so good. Amen. Mm. So battle at your gate this year. The devil does not want you to come through, but God said, I've already made the preparation for you, and I want you to come all the way through, says the Lord. Now, Providence Jane Hammond received another word this year, and it, uh, her word in, in a nutshell, in essence, was is that this is a beginning of a new release of the prophet's reward. Say the prophet's reward. <laughs> Amen. And uh, she was referencing the Second Kings chapter 4 and the Shunammite woman. Amen. And how that she, there was a miracle that she needed. Amen. And we begin to discover that the prophet's reward is the miracle that money can't buy. Yeah. Right. Say the miracle money can't buy. Yeah. How many of you need a miracle tonight that money is not the issue? Come on, the house is full of needs. I've got, I got family. I've got situations. Come on, uh, the money's not the issue. Amen. I just need a supernatural miracle. I hear the Lord saying to you, you don't just need one miracle. You need a wave of miracles. You need a miracle to support the miracle to support the miracle. You need wave after wave after wave of miracles. You need wave after wave in the building process. You need waves of miracles. Amen. Where God's bringing you from right now to the place that he is bringing you to. Just raise your hands with me right now now in Jesus mighty name father I want to declare and decree this to be a beginning right here in this house right now Lord of the prophets reward Lord they have sown seed that they have already forgotten about and Lord they have planted seed and Lord they have already forgotten but Lord you said their seed is upon the waters and it is time for the seed to come rolling back in on every wave and so Lord I decree a beginning of, of the prophets reward upon this house in Jesus name God I I'm decreeing an abundance of breakthrough, an abundance of anointing, uh, abundance of provision, uh, abundance of joy, abundance of life, abundance of health. Come on now. Abundance of the supernatural, abundance of joy. Come on now. Abundance of anointing. Lord, to begin to rest upon each one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. So Prophetess Jane was saying that it was kind of like the Shunammite woman. How do you remember that story in the Bible? The Bible says that Elijah the prophet, say Elijah, Elijah. amen, Elijah the prophet, every time he would come to Shunammite, amen, that, that 
that, that this home, amen, recognized the prophet, and they said, come to our house and stay at our place. The Bible says that every time that Elijah come to Shunem, here was the Shunemite woman, come on now, and bidding and saying, you're welcome at our house. In that, I can say prophetically right now, begin to welcome the prophetic on a brand new wave, says the Lord, because I am bringing a word of breakthrough for you. I'm bringing a word of takeover for you. I'm bringing a word of restoration for you. I'm bringing a word of joy for you. I'm bringing a word to you in this season, and I want you to open up your heart and begin to welcome the word of the Lord. Come on. The Bible says the Shunammite woman was so excited about the prophet coming and she was getting so much more adamant about the word of the Lord that she told her husband, listen, this year, let's build a new room on our house. Say a construction job. Come on. She said, let's build. A new and guess what? Her husband agrees. <laughs> That's probably a bigger miracle. He... <laughs> He agrees, yeah, we're going to, we'll build a room on the house. Come on now. And, and the Bible says they built a nice room because the prophet said, I was so blessed in that room. I was so refreshed in that room. When I slept in that room, it was so great that he told his servant Gehazi, I, he said that, what can I do for that woman? Because she has blessed us so much. And Gehazi, I said, there is one thing. She wants a son. Her husband's too old, lost interest, doesn't care, and is just unable to give her what she wants. But she has this thing in her heart that she would like a son. The Bible says that Elijah prophesies to the Shunammite woman, and he said, next year at this time, you're going to hold a bouncing baby boy in your arms. Come on now. How many of you know when you receive a word like that, Glory to God. And it's something that you're believing for. And God hits that thing. And he said, that is what I'm going to do. How many of you get excited? You would think that the Shunammite woman got excited. But how many of you remember her response? Her response was like this. Don't tease me with the word. I didn't ask for the word. And don't tease me with a promise that's in my heart. She said, I didn't ask for it. But on the other hand, <laughs> I kind of think she was asking. Because she told her husband, listen, let's build a room. Let's make an investment for the prophet to stay in our house. I think she had a motive. What do you think? Stay at our house. Because there's a need, there's a, something that is in my heart that I want. And yet when the word of the Lord come to her, she says, don't tease me with the word. I was in Montreal, Canada, doing a conference. And I walked into the conference room and about 500 people there. And, and there was a gentleman sitting on the back corner. And he had dark glasses and you know, mustache and suit and tie. And he was really dressed out. And when I walk in, I, I normally shake hands with people, brothers. Just, you know, you know shake hands and, and greet and ladies. I shake their hand and pat their arm lightly. My wife's taught me that. And, uh, <laughs> And, but, man, I like to shake their hand and squeeze it a little bit, you know, slap them on the back, pat, pat, you know. They, it's a man thing. <laughs> and I greeted that brother as I walked in the building, and he felt a real welcome. And when I got on the platform and they called me up to minister, such as tonight, amen, and I got into the pulpit, and I mean, before I even got my mouth open, God spoke to me, and he said, call that man out on the back corner. And I'm like... God, not that man, because I already greeted that man when I walked in, and he'll think I'm pointing or picking on him personal, you know, purposely. And God said, prophesy to him. And so I begin to prophesy to that man. Now, as I prophesied, the man turned and he walked out of the building. <laughs> And I said, now, now, God, what do I do? He said, just keep prophesying. <laughs> so for about five minutes, I gave a long prophetic word to 
an empty chair on the back corner. They don't teach you in Bible college, what do you do when the prophetee leads the profiteer? <laughs> the next morning, the gentlemen come back to the meeting. And those things, that's easy. We had tapes. Everybody say tapes. You know, my grandkids don't even know what a tape is, but it was something we put in a machine that was a lot easier to use. And, uh, but the elders had his tape, and when he walked in the building, they pulled him aside and took him in a side room and played the prophetic word for him. And here was the man's testimony, cutting to the chase. He said, I came believing for a word. And he said, but when the word came, I was hurting so much. He said, because I've been in ministry for 30 years, I just built a brand new building, and I was in my office, and I got filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, and I was given the left foot of fellowship out of my church. He said, that same day, I was released from 30 years of all my ministry, and I saw my whole life go down the tubes that day. And he said, when the word came, I was hurting so bad, I couldn't stand to hear what I came to hear. Come on. But the Lord spoke to that man and said, in three years, you're going to be an apostle, and you're going to be a church planter, and you're going to plant many churches, says the Lord. And God said, I'm raising you up for a new time and for a new season, says the Lord. I went back two years later and done a minister's conference as we was doing another conference in Montreal. And guess who was there? That gentleman came, and he came with three other pastors, and he said, we've planted three churches. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering. Come on, this, this is what was happening with the Shunammite woman. She desired the word, but when the word came, she was hurting too much to receive the word. You can be in a position where God begins to speak to you, and because of doubt and unbelief and pain, and because of hope being deferred, come on, even when the word comes, your soul or your flesh will try to reject that word. Look at somebody say, don't reject the word. A, a man and woman sitting on the corner right there. The, right there. Yes, right there. Would you all please stand? <clears throat> Pardon? Gerald and Belinda. Gerald and Belinda. Yeah. Amen. Gerald and Belinda. Just stretch your hands over to them, would you? Uh, as, I, as I look back at the two of you, I saw fire. And it wasn't like the fire setting on you. It was like fire under you. And God said the enemy tried to burn you up and burn you out. But the Lord said, I used it. What the enemy meant to destroy, I used it as a fire of purification. And God said, I've allowed you to go through a process that not all could go through. But God said, like Job, I knew what you could do and what you couldn't do, says the Lord. And God said, I allowed you to go through it to bring you to this day. Now listen, I hear the Lord say, it's taken every situation in your life and family to bring you to be the man and woman that you are today. God said, had you not been there, you would not be here. And God says, son and daughter, I have saved you for such a time as this. And I'm hearing the Lord say, this is a new season for a new vision and a new time of preparation, says the Lord. And I hear God say, new direction is coming into your soul and your spirit. And it's not going to come from this person and that person and this prophet and that prophet. God said, no, it's going to come from me to you, says the Lord. And God said, there's an encounter that you are getting ready to happen. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to redeem your family. And God said, what? the enemy tried to destroy I will save says the Lord and God says son arise as a priest in your family and begin to declare the word of the Lord again and I hear God say I saw you the day son when you put yourself in the closet says the Lord and God says I'm blowing the door off the closet and God said this is your season of effectiveness says the Lord and, and since I hear God say the joy of the Lord is your strength and God said I'm pouring new joy in you new vision in you new purpose in you and I don't want you to ever, ever say, been there, done that, and bought the T-shirt. 
I hear God say, it's a new day, son and daughter. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And behold, I will do a brand new thing in you, through you, for you, about you, in your family. And all that you touch will now begin to prosper. And I hear the Lord say, what the enemy wrongfully took away from you is going to come back to you sevenfold, says the Lord. And God said, reposition yourself like Elijah on the mountain. And when he was decreeing that the drought would be broken, come on now, and he refused to look at the negative of the servant. Uh, and he said, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep believing, keep looking. And the Lord says, keep looking, keep believing. For God said, surely I'm going to release a power powerful deluge in your behalf, says the Lord. Father, I charge these two right now. God, was such a joy and it was such an excitement. Brother, I just hear God say, I'm going to give you hot feet. And the Lord said, son, you're not going to be able to stand still. Uh, stand still. You're going to be a dancing in the spirit. You're going to be dancing for me. You're going to be a man on the run, a man on the go. And I hear the word international written over the two of you. And God said, there was an international dream in you. I put it there 25 years ago, says the Lord. And God said, but now it's time for fulfillment, says the Lord. And God said, I want you to get your faith in alignment, and I want you to begin to believe to receive, says the Lord. And God said, I will make all things possible in your behalf, says the Father. Lord, I just charge them right now. Lord, a new season of kingdom release, Father, a new positioning for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, just remain standing for just a minute. Just, everybody, stretch your hands back there to them, will you? I just... Uh, Wow. Can you go back there and just put your arms around, just kind of love them, just, just, and just get close together and just love, 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 love. Everybody say love, 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 love. Unfiltered love, unfiltered love. Oh, God, God, I just, God just pour such unfiltered love upon these two right now. God, you're going to love them right out of the place they're in, right out of the situation they're in, right out of the deficit they're in. You're going to love them right into the fullness of all that you have for them. And I hear God telling you, son and daughter, what I said to you in the beginning i have never changed my mind circumstances change people change time change seasons change uh, opportunities change but god said i change not says the lord and god said what i spoke to you then i will do now says the lord father release that healing balm of gilead in them right now god let faith bubble up in them let faith soar on the inside of them oh god and pour back into them the fullness of your glory in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. God is so good. My brother right here. Yes, right there on the. Yes, amen. Yeah, would you please stand? Yeah, do you have a telephone? I do have a telephone. You do have. Is your wife here? Okay. Man, what's your name, my brother? Thurman. Thurman? Yes. Thurman. Okay, Thurman. What's your wife's name? Shirley. Shirley. Shirley, there's a Thurman. Yes. <laughs> Sherman, as I've been looking at you, I, I'm just seeing, it's like a clear, clear, clear vision that God's putting into your spirit. And I hear the Lord say, I'm bringing you and Shirley into a place that you have not been to yet. And I don't want you to look for the old thing. And I don't want you to look just for the safe thing. I want you to look for the faith thing. I want you to look for me, says the Lord. And God says, I'm bringing the two of you to a place that you have never been before. Joshua, in Joshua chapter 3, said it like this. Keep your eyes on me, for you have not come this way before. And the Lord said, I'm bringing the two of you a way that you have not been before, says the Lord. And God said, it's a new day of glory, a new day of rejoicing, and a new day of power. But brother, I just see some old, old images, old doctrine, old things try to rise up at a moment and when I talked about giants at the gate, they try to rise like a giant at the gate and says, you can't go into the land of Canaan that you really wanted to go into. And I hear the Lord say, I'm bringing you to a place in me. God says, where no weapon in hell was, will, it will be able to form against you, says the Lord, and the enemy will not be able to stop you or block you. You are unstoppable, says the Lord. And God said, I'm putting fire in your heart, fire in your spirit. And God said, I'm putting fire in your word, says the Lord. And I hear God telling you, it's a time to prosper. 
brother, there's an entrepreneur anointing upon you and everything that you, you're, listen, you've been, you have lost more than more people will make in a lost lifetime. And I hear God say, your day of losing is over, says the yes. Lord. And God, said, uh, God says, not only are you going to tap into a new well, but God said, you're going to be able to retain what you tap into, says the Lord. Yeah. The Bible says the devil comes to rob, steal, kill, but I come to give you life and that more abundantly, says the Lord. And God said, this is a time of abundance. Now listen, God wants you to know that he's going to bless you in such a way that you have never been blessed because I can trust you to give it away. And the Lord said, you've never been a keeper for yourself. But God said, I'm going to give you blessing that you're going to be able to keep. But God said, I'm giving you a love that I want you to give away, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to be a prophetic voice. God said, even in the marketplace, even with people in high places, says, uh, whoa, I hear the word government. Brother, and you, you know very little about government, but I hear God say, you're going to have an understanding of government because there's a governmental anointing that I put within you, says the Lord. And God said, I don't want you to become Democrat. I don't want you to become Republican. I want you to be uh, under my kingdom, says the Lord. My kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Wow, I just see, I just see, uh, Apostle Mickey, can you go back and touch him, if you mind? Just, I, I just, Apostle Sandy, just, just go back and touch this man. I don't even know who he is. You come from Dallas? Yeah. No. Well, I, I live in Plano. I'm from North Carolina. You're from North Carolina? I'm going to North Carolina in two weeks. Hallelujah. Whereabouts? I'm from Durham. Where? Durham. 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 Okay, I'll be in North, uh, Winston-Salem. But uh, right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, th this is a divine appointment. Lord, I don't know what you're taking this man into, but God, it's a place that he has never been before. I, and Lord, I abolish all fear, all intimidation, and everything that would be a limitation. I come against it right now in Jesus' mighty name. And God, I speak a kingdom release on the inside of this man, oh God, that is getting him at the right place at the right time in Jesus' name. Now listen, there's a healing miracle for your wife, Shirley. And God says, some things are not going to go the way that they will appear, but they'll go the way that I declare, says the Lord. And God said, I want you to be a man of faith, and I want you to pray for your wife. Pray hard for your wife. Brother, there's a powerful anointing upon her life, and there's a place in God that she has not fully come into yet. But God said, I'm taking the veil away, says the Lord, and this will be a new season of kingdom release. Says, uh, Let it be known when you came to Dallas, Texas, you had an encounter with God that is going to be life changing for you says the Lord Father I charge this man by the power of your love and your grace now in Jesus name we pray everybody said amen amen, amen. amen. look at somebody and say God is so good amen so as you co-labor and you're obedient with the word of the Lord this year it's going to be a glorious and a prosperous year say glorious and prosperous amen Wage war, battle, fight at your gate. Come on. Brother, I'm sorry, I already forgot your name. Josh? J Joshua, there is such a warfare anointing, my brother, that is coming upon you. And, and I hear the Lord say, it's going to be gradual. It's not like it's going to be a suddenly. It's going to be a gradual. It's going to start in your feet, and it's going to move upward into your body, says the Lord. And God says, son, there's an encounter in me that you've been crying out for. And God said, I'm releasing the encounter. I hear God say, get more acquainted with dreams and visions, brother. Uh, like a Joseph and Daniel, God said, I'm going to speak to you in that nighttime season and a moment when you least expect it God said the glory of the Lord will surround you let me tell you what I just saw I saw you as a leader and as a man that is leading and John Maxwell said in a quote amen if you're if you're leading and there's nobody following you you're just taking a nice walk but I hear the Lord say you're not just taking a walk God said you're a man that's in the lead position says the Lord and I I, I just see a whole army of millennials that are following you, says the Lord. And God said, I'm striking an apostolic nerve in your spirit. And God said, there is revelation getting ready to bubble up in you. And God said, you're going to write 10 books. God said, you're going to touch 10 nations, says the Lord. And God said, son, you will have follower after follower after follower. And God said, I want you to be an imparter of the anointing and the gift and the power that I put within you, says the Lord. I hear the Lord 
I'm telling you, this is just the beginning because I have a word for you on Sunday. Hallelujah. It's just the beginning. Look at somebody say, it's just the beginning. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Amen. War at your gate this year. And get ready. Get ready to battle. Don't give up. Just because the going gets tough, get tougher. I've been in ministry nearly 40 years now. Have I'll be 75 in November. You know, just, I thought, I thought when you got to this stage of life that everything shifted and it got easier. It's tougher than it has ever been. I'm more challenged today than I have ever been. I'm confronted with more impossibilities today than I've ever been confronted with. But you know what? God trusts you so much. Amen. That that valley of hardship will not be able to stop you. Come on. He's putting a momentum in you that is unstoppable. Look at somebody say, it's unstoppable. Come on now. I, I pray when you leave this place tonight, don't say, I just went to church and heard, a, heard an apostle preaching and telling stories and no I've been giving you a testimony just like Paul carried testimonies from city to city I just came from Thessalonica I just came from Cilicia I just came from Corinth I just and sharing the testimony of the saints you need to know God is breaking through all across our nation and our nation is so small in comparison to the earth at large the Bible says the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God. So much is happening in the nations of the world. Throughout the other, listen, the dead are being raised. Devils are being cast out. Kingdoms are being possessed. False kingdoms are being torn down. Don't be stuck here in Dallas, Texas, where God has you and think that everything is right here. No, no, God's working throughout the whole earth. And what we are doing is like a weight on the will that is keeping the world turning. Look at somebody say, you're very important. I want to, I don't know if we can just slide this over. Uh, a couple of the brethren come up and just slide this over. If you, I, I want to give an invitation. You say, who should come? I believe everybody in the house should come. I believe that we can all come to the front of the building. I believe there's plenty of room. We might get close for just a few minutes. We're not going to keep you that way for too long. But I'm just going to ask if everybody would just come stand at the front of the building with me. I'll have to pick up on Sunday morning where we couldn't get to tonight. But on Sunday morning, I'm breaking. I'm breaking the spirit of limitation. And when I begin to talk about limitations Sunday morning, you're going to understand the devil's been at work hard against your life. See, you're the devil's worst nightmare. You're warriors. You're the saints of the Most High. You're not just a woman or just a lady. You're a warrior of the Most High God. You're, 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 you're such high perspective in the eyes of the Father. We must be careful as apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. We must be careful how we talk to you. You are the ecclesia. You may not be perfect. We're not perfect. But in your daddy's eyes, all in your daddy's eyes. I have three beautiful daughters. I feel they're beautiful. They're my daughters. <laughs> my oldest daughter's 55. My youngest is just turned 49. Those kids, I'll tell you what, when I look back over their life, they've done some things in life that frustrated me. When my youngest daughter was 43, she decided to go against something that daddy told her. I went and parked my car right in front of her house. 
my, my headlights beaming right in her window. Called her on my phone. And I told her, I said, Daddy's out here. <laughs> you know, and you know, you know what you're doing. And you know. And here's her response. Daddy, I'm 43. I said, I don't care if you're 65. I'm daddy. I love you too much to let this go this way. Your daddy loves you so much. When he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. At the time of your greatest discouragement, your greatest hardship, your greatest challenge, God said, I will be right there with you. All of you that are here with us tonight, I talked about a kingdom shift. I talked about a time of enlargement, a time of expansion. And God said, I'm going to expand you in this season. Don't let age, don't let physical condition, don't let financial impossibility, and don't let mindsets keep you from going where God has called you to. I'm going to break that off of this church Sunday morning. You're getting ready to go for a ride with the Father like you have never been on before. I pray in your sleep tonight that you find Jesus in a totally different way. Listen, when you find Jesus, that doesn't mean you're perfect. It means He's perfect in you. And His righteousness has become your righteousness. Paul said, the life that I live, I now live by the faith of the Son of God. There's a new wave of grace, a new wave of anointing. I'm not talking about slippery, greasy grace. No, no. Daddy is very, he'll park in front of your house and shine lights right in your window. Daddy is not Lucy Goosey. But he's the most loving father that you could ever hope or want to meet. And he said, I love you so much. See, as I'm praying for you, I see a light shining over this entire crowd tonight. If you could only see the light that I'm seeing. I'm seeing anointings and giftings. It's like they're just popping up and pulling down and popping up and pulling down. Uh, anointings of prophetic, anointing of faith, anointing of healing, anointings of miracles, anointings of testimony, anointings of evangelism, anointing of helps, anointing of hospitality, anointing of love, anointing of miracles, signs and wonders. I just said just popping up all over in front of me tonight. And I'm going to ask you just to lay your hands on your heart. Well, let me do it this way. Lay your right hand on your heart and lay your left hand lightly on the shoulder of somebody that is near you or in front of you. Real lightly. Men, if you're laying hands on the lady's shoulder, lay carefully. And I want to pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for life and that abundant life. Lord, I decree by your word that right now, this very moment, it's a brand new day. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And Lord, that from this moment forth, you said, behold, I'll do a brand new thing, and now it shall spring forth. And God, let this brand new thing begin to spring forth in them. I bind every spirit of discouragement right now. Everything that has attacked their heart, attacked their mind, attacked their gifting, attacked them physically, personally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, I bind it right now by the power of your love. And I take authority over it and I cast it down in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I decree life in that more abundantly to begin to bubble up into the midst of them right now. Listen, there's a word of deliverance happening right now. 
Go, go ahead, just, just pray. Say, God, I, I release. God, I release myself to you. Lord, everything that I've held to myself, everything that I have kept back, oh God, Lord, where I've not given 100%, God, I'm going to give 100% of who I You gave 100 plus percent for me, and God, I'm going to give everything I have for you. I break a hindering spirit of past doctrine, past revelation that was given for a past day. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, God said that be established in the present truth. He was saying truth that is appropriate for right now. Let me decree to you, God is not outdated. He is not mystical, mythical. He is not out of touch. The earth is his, the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him. All knowledge, all technology, all, we, all belongs to God. You belong to God tonight. All that you have belongs to God. And he is jealous over you. And he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God, I minister a word of healing to heart pain right now. And I'm not talking about a physical heart pain. I'm talking about an emotional pain. And if you have a physical pain, God will heal that too. But emotional pain in the heart right now, I take authority over it. Abuses, oh God, oh Lord, misuses and things that the enemy tried to use to be a blockage to them. I break the lie of it right now. I break the agreement of it right now. And I decree a brand new heart and a new blood flow of the Spirit of God in the midst of them. Oh, just take a deep breath. Just breathe it in, would you? Come on, don't, don't miss this moment. Savor this moment. Come on, we've spent time in worship and time in the Word and time in sharing. Come on now. And right now, you're at a moment of faith. Don't let this moment get away from you. Don't say, let the enemy say, another day, another time. It's not mine tonight. No, it is yours tonight. The healing anointing, the deliverance anointing, come on now, is here to set you free right now now. I hear the Lord challenging you to begin to take back what the enemy wrongfully took away from you. Take back your faith. Take back your boldness. Take back your personality. Take back your finances. Take back your position. Take back your children. Take back your family. Take back your marriage. Take back your position. Take back your anointing. Take back your gifting. Take back the glory that the Father has released upon you. Take it back right now. Just say, God, I take it back. God, I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Revelation chapter 3 says you have a, a little strength. You have all that you need right now. You have all that you need to break through to that next dimension. I'm telling you, from this night forward, your life is not going to be the same. You say, how do you know? Because I'm hearing God. Your life is not going to be the same. God God is going to remind you of this word. God is going to remind you of this moment. God is going to remind you of who you are. Come on now. And how jealous he is over you. God's going to remind you. Come on now. You're not older, you're better. Come on now. Look at somebody and say, don't be bitter. Come on, don't be bitter. Come on, let, uh, come on. God's going to use everything in your life to make you better. You're going to be better today than you have ever been. I want to break a spirit of fear right now. Fear of who you are. Fear of your alignment. Fear of your future. Fear of being qualified. Fear of being put on the spot. Fear of having to answer a question that you just don't have the answer to. Fear of losing. Fear of being set back. Fear of being rejected. Fear that abuse could happen again. Fear of being uncovered. Fear of being unloved. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I break the spirit of fear and all of its attacks. Devil, you try to come in, in, in ways that try to, to uh, defy the people of God, but I defy you right now in Jesus' name, and I command fear, get out of here in Jesus' mighty name. Take your hand off these people of God. Lord, activate a boldness and a confidence in them, oh God, that they can run, oh God, harder than they have ever run before. They can fulfill do more than they've ever done before by the power of your love. 
and the power of your grace. Can I ask you just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit? Just to just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Sharabo, give it to you. Sharabo, Kitande, 